Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Seekers of the Supernatural. I'm your moderator, Tony Sparrow, of course, along with Ed and Lorraine Warren tonight, and a special guest named Paul, who has quite a tale to tell us. Uh, this case is about a, the old Worcester mansion. It's in Connecticut, now a restaurant called Carousel Gardens. Now, I'd like to start, if I could, with, with Ed first. We'll get to Ed Lorraine, then with Paul, to find out about this intriguing case right here in Connecticut. Ed, could I ask you about this mansion? Of what first brought brought this to your attention? Well, the very first thing that I ever heard about the Carousel Gardens was the fact that it was haunted. And uh, we had two young women come to our house one day. They would videotape uh, different weddings and affairs at the Carousel Gardens. And uh, they put on this tape for me. And they said, we left it running upstairs where they had all the gifts for the uh, wedding set out and everything, and they walked away. And all of a sudden, a shadow ghost moved right out in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Well, when I seen that, of course, I was shocked because very few people ever get film of a shadow ghost. And I had them back it up, and sure enough, that's what it was, a genuine shadow ghost. So I had to know more about the car Carousel Gardens. Uh, Lorraine and I went there. We met the proprietors, uh, Paul and Debbie, and uh, very nice people. They showed us around. Lorraine immediately picked up the fact that it was haunted. Mm -hmm. And we heard many tales from the waitresses, the bartender. When women would go into, for instance, the ladies' room, many of them would be hit by a dime, a 10-cent piece. We don't know what the meaning of that was, but it would just appear out of nowhere, hit them on the shoulder or on the face or the head. And um, then people would be sitting there eating. And one night in particular, I remember, we heard a commotion. We were in one of the other rooms. And uh, we ran in. And the people were all standing up, very excited. It seems that at this one table where this elderly lady was, her glass was probably a foot away from her. And suddenly it went up into the air and exploded. Mm -hmm. Now about five feet away was a sergeant from the Bridgeport Police Department. And that's an intriguing de de uh, detail. Yeah, let, let, me, let tell me tell you about that well, one. Well, what had happened, we were doing a seminar that night there, Tony. And you were speaking. And then Ed was going to be speaking. Well, I'm waiting for my turn. And I walked in to what was Horace Wister's bedroom. One of the bedrooms on the second floor of this man. I have a picture of Horace right here. I don't know if you, we could. No, get that's this. that's his father. This is his father. That's what his, is his father, name? William, William William Wister. I don't know if uh, Paul wants to get over to. If we want to go to this shot here. If you can, if Paul can go. This to is William that. Wister. That's what. That's the man who mm -hmm. built uh, that mansion. Mm -hmm. He's the man who built it. I might as well show the picture of the mansion, mansion while we're, while we're at it. That's the picture now of the that mansion. house. What's haunted? What are all those? All that? That's electromagnetic energy, which of course spirits use to manifest themselves. But many times people have seen spirits moving across the rooms upstairs, lights going across the rooms, mm -hmm. so forth, levitations, footsteps on the stairs. Uh, I can remember one night well, there was another commotion. We went out and a ghostly form was going right up the stairs, up to the third mm -hmm. floor. Yeah, it was there. Now the, uh, on the second floor, Tony, mm -hmm. off. To the right, the two windows off to the right, there, Horace's bedroom. Mm -hmm. Now, I had gone in there just to sit down for a minute. And as I walked in, there were four people sitting on the far wall, and this sergeant and his wife were sitting on the side wall. And I, I didn't know who any, of who any of the people were at that time. Now, one couple, where the four some were, was an elderly couple, an older couple. And they were there with their daughter and son-in-law, I was to find out later. Now, in front of the elderly lady, kind of off to the kind of side of the table, this stemware glass went up very slowly like this in the air, to my amazement watching this thing, and then it exploded into minute pieces. Mm -hmm. So when this happened, the sergeant, he noticed it, and, right. and uh, of course, the family. Now, you and, and Ed came in about that time, and I went in to speak. 
at one point during the fa during the time that I was speaking, the older man came and stood by the door. So I excused myself for a minute and went over to greet him. Come to find out, their last name was the same as my maiden name, which is Moran. And he asked me if I knew a Steve and Mariah mm -hmm. uh, Moran from County Clare, Ireland. And I said, well, a Steve and Mariah Moran from County Clare were my grandparents. And he said, then I believe I'm related to you. <coughs> and being almost St. Patrick's Day, we have to give a little plug for Ireland. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So, so anyway, uh, that was one of my first things to witness. Now, another time, I was across the hall in what was Ruth's bedroom. Mm -hmm. Now, these were two children of Mr. Wister's and his wife. Now, Ruth's spirit is really the one that haunts this Carousel Gardens restaurant. And I was in there. I was talking to you. You said to me, why don't you go in the other room, because we were having a class that night, and bring Ed in, something the three of us were going to discuss. Mm -hmm. And with this, I walked out the door, and her spirit went right up that stairway. You saw that, right? You yes. saw that, Lorraine? Yes. Wow. The third floor. I remember you commenting. I never saw it. No, I you didn't see it because you were still sitting down. Now, the very first time that Ed and I ever went there, it was a Sunday, and they had a Sunday brunch at that time, and we went there. And we were sitting there, we were talking, and uh, this waitress came up to us and said, oh, there's people here that are very, very upset. They're very, very frightened because the mother and daughter went in the ladies' room and they were showered with coins. Really? That's yeah. the kind of hauntings I like. That's the coins with, keep coming. Yeah, and, but they're not frightening hauntings. No. They're beautiful hauntings. I think at this point, yeah, we'll let Paul. We'd like to introduce Paul, the owner. Hi, Paul. Welcome Hi. to the show. Well, thanks for having me down. It's Good. A, it's a great honor to be down here with the three of you. We're glad to have you. Can you give us some insight on, on, on what's, what's happening and what happened at your place? Okay. Well, to pick up on the story with the dimes, this, this woman um, was in the, the ladies' room, and these dimes uh, took and fell down. Well, my daughter was in the same room with Ed and Lorraine, and they were in the uh, Worcester room, which is the... Uh, formal dining room to the, to the restaurant. And uh, Lorraine asked uh, Michelle about this Mancini child. And we couldn't to figure out, you know, why wouldn't you uh, just say, hi, Michelle? But she wanted to know about Mancini. And the Mancini child was a, was a woman who was hurt on the parkway. Well, at that same time, these dimes were coming out. And the Mancini child had a um, I believe a sergeant in the, um, her father was a sergeant or an uncle in the uh, police force. So when we interviewed the girl with the dimes, her last name was Mancini. Mm -hmm. And it's just strange how all these, these coincidences, coincidences just happen and happen. And uh, Lorraine went over to the table and uh, talked to the people and explained this is just something that happens. I guess it's an app port that opens up and these coins will come out. Yeah, I'd like to explain about that. What we're talking about here are called apports, items that materialize into our dimension and sometimes dematerialize. That's where these dimes are coming from, where the glasses explode. This comes through another phenomenon called telekinesis, which a lot of people think is the movement of objects. Actually, it's very high sound that's projected toward something fine, some china like glass, and it exploded. So that's what's happening at uh, Paul's restaurant here. Mm -hmm. Continue, Paul. I just wanted to explain yeah. that. Okay. So um, uh, Lorraine went over and, and, and talked to the people and explained that it was just uh, a, not a harmful thing. It's just things that, that happened. Um, there was no evil spirits in, inside the restaurant. It's mm -hmm. a happy haunt. It's, it's a happy haunt that, <laughs> yes, that's inside there. And uh, from that point on, we've had many dimes appear. Now, I've mm. probably found over 100 dimes inside of the restaurant, one or two pennies, maybe a quarter. So obviously, it's these dimes have some uh, meaning yeah. that, that, that's inside the restaurant. We haven't figured out what the meaning would be. Wow. And each, each one of these dimes I keep on saving, and I have a whole jar of them right now. Mm. Now, the bartender, didn't, didn't one bar uh, bartender have 
An incident occurred that was kind of scary one night. Yeah, well, well that oh, right there. Yes. Well, yeah. Um, we had three or four uh, patrons inside of the bar. It was late at night, and the uh, cash register, it just moved out from the wall, yeah. and there was enough room for it to fall straight down in between all of the woodwork and, wow. and the front of the bar. It elevated, turned upside down, mm -hmm. and just fell right into the floor. Yeah, wow. I remember yeah. that. And night. that was uh, just strange. Yeah. I didn't see that, but there was uh, a, f a few patrons that were yeah. in there. What's right. like the first thing that you you experienced yourself, Paul? The first thing that I experienced was uh, when I first purchased the place back in '93, that um, a bat appeared, and it's the first time that I've ever had a bat appear, and it seemed friendly. It inside would the restaurant. Inside the restaurant, it would fly from the dining room into the kitchen. And we weren't even open. This was in September, about three months before we even opened. And the bat did materialize and, uh, and fly through. Well, I got the bat into one small room, mm -hmm. and there was no way the bat could uh, uh, leave the, the room. And there was no way the bat was in there anymore. The bat had just dematerialized and gone. And then to come back to the bat, about three years later, the bat appeared again. And it was friendly. It would fly down, fly into the office. It would take fly back out in the dining room. It landed <coughs> on the, the large dining room wall. It walked about 40 feet. I went over with a little plastic container and caught the bat. Mm. It was just friendly. It wasn't going to be doing anything. Decided it was cold out. This is in November now. I decided to let the bat go on the third floor. There's a large area up there with 19 foot ceilings. And I let the bat go and we haven't seen the bat since. So it's just two times. Wow. We, uh, we had uh, people uh -huh. stay investigators did stay yeah. at the carousel gardens yes and uh i think it was like two nights and they did get ghost globules maybe we can show some of those pictures of the ghost globules yeah. uh which are round uh, sphere-like uh, objects these will be seen and picked up by the camera okay now here's these a few are here the outside yeah that's outside the restaurant it's a gorgeous place yeah, it really I want to is focus in on victorian that. building uh, you see only those in haunted areas where you find this type of phenomena. Can you turn that around? I think there's some more pictures there. Yeah. yeah now you can see some large ghost globules. Yes. Now this is the electromagnetic energy which is drawn from the plant life around the building. The trees, the grass, so forth. They will form into large globules mm -hmm. and then they will move about and sometimes go into a cigar shape and then go into a form of a ghost or an apparition. I remember one night. No, I showed um, this picture, but these yeah. is, this is the same kind of thing materializing. That's yet, or the is energy. This? That's it's the electromagnetic energy yes. that's drawn. This is what comprises the ghost. Mm -hmm. And I, that picture down here is very interesting that you have. Okay, this one oh. here is inside the restaurant. What, inside. what is this all about, Ed? One night, uh, I think a young man was fooling around. He dressed up sort of like a a uh, black uh, ghost-like figure. Yes. But what he didn't count on was that the ghosts were watching him. If you can close in on that mirror, you will see a large face looking out at you, a man's face. Can you close it in? It might be kind of hard to see, but I can see it from here. You can't close in. I can see it. can't close in on you. Yeah, look at it, hon. You oh, see yes, it right, right. I can see the. I can see the ghost. And that is one yeah. of the ghosts of the Carousel Gardens, and it's right there where two young girls were standing one night, mm -hmm. and the mother took pictures of them, and they had this ghost-like figure hovering right above their head. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the best psychic pictures I've ever I seen. I right saw there. It. Yeah, yeah, you so saw it, Tony. Spot. Yeah. Now another night. There's another picture here. Let me just what? grab this. What is uh, what is this all about? Look at this one. Look at oh, that. Look wow. at that. There. That's downstairs. Yes. More electromagnetic energy. Uh, if you go there in the evening, this is when you pick up most of these types of pictures. You see all the electromagnetic energy on the right-hand side of the picture. They're forming some up on the left. These will form into ghost globules, and then again, you might see the ghost, which will be hovering about the stairs or going through the uh, hallways. Right, there. right. And then you got a picture that's downstairs. Uh, yeah. That's right at the entrance. Right Those the entrance. are psychic light rods Look that here? you see there. Yes. Right there. Taking away there. Psychic light rods. This is another type of phenomenon besides the ghost globules, and that's at the entranceway where a lot of people have felt upon entering their presences. So this, so when this you is feel it when you get this kind of thing, this is evidence of ghostly oh, phenomena, yes, right? Yes, sure. yes, yeah. But not only do we uh, get the pictures, these incredible pictures you have here, but recordings, footsteps, uh, voices, which we call magic whispering and so forth. 
But the good thing about the Carousel Gardens is nobody's ever been hurt. Oh, no. Uh, it's an intriguing place just to go into and to see if you can witness some kind of phenomena. You know, another thing. Well, every time you go in there, Lorraine, you feel something, yes, don't you? Yeah, and certain nights, far more than others. Now, there was a bad fire that happened in this town, a real bad fire. And the building that Mr. Worcester had owned, this huge, big shop that he had owned, burnt that night. Just prior to that and just after that, hauntings were really going on mm -hmm. to a tremendous extent. You, you know, you got to remember that the, this man and woman, brother and sister, the last 14 years of their life. They lived in that house. They yeah. lived in that house and didn't speak to each other. This. Uh, of course, accumulates a lot of animosity, yes. a lot of anger, a lot of hatred. Mm -hmm. Spirits are drawn to that. Now, a lot of people, when they die, they pass over, they go on. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Ruth here wants to stay on. But Ruth's spirit will draw other spirits. But these are not demonic, these are not devils, these are not demons. Are they earthbound? These are spirits yes. of human beings, yeah. Yes. And I don't think anybody could ever be hurt there. I think what they're trying to do is just to show that they are there. That, mm -hmm. you know, we're still here. We want you to know that we're here. That's what it's all about. Doors will open and close. Mm -hmm. uh, lights noises, will go on and off. Noises. Sounds of footsteps. Uh, what we call magic whispering. It's all been experienced at the Carousel Gardens. One mm -hmm. night, one night, honey, w we taught there. We taught in this building for a period of time. Oh, people love to go to a, a oh, haunted... Oh, uh, God. Carousel Gardens and just go in there and take some classes. Oh, we gorgeous. used to do that some years ago. And um, so this one night, there was two men, and they were from the Boston area. They used to commute all the way down, and they had a brand new digital camera. And I was coming out of the carousel. We were going to go and have coffee after class. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen anything so amazing. You know how you see it on the screen? with the digital right. cameras. Mm -hmm. It was raining ghost globules. And it was a beautiful, clear night, and it was just all over ghost globules. You see, that's the kind of thing we look for. Today, with the advent of the camcorder, with the digital cameras, we're getting things that we could never get before. No. In fact, I think we have uh, three pictures there of the uh, Tower of London, one of the most haunted locations in the world. Yeah, what happened to Now, them? we've taken people to London and yeah. to England all over, and we've never gotten these types of pictures before. Okay, I have three pictures here. here. The famous Tower of London. We can focus but in on this. Now see these Look at the globules over here. Yes, globules just that's like right. We have at the Carousel Gardens. Here's some more. Now, there you go, yes. Now, you see a number of, of uh, glo ghost globules there, but we've gone there with hundreds of people. We've never gotten pictures like this until just recently. I see the now, these are the same type of phenomena that we have occurring at the Carousel Gardens. That's amazing. Which yes, shows it is amazing for Thousands comparison. Thousands of miles away. Thousands, Thousands of, miles, of away. miles away. Same kind of photo. Yes, exactly. That is. Yes. But I'll tell you, if you want to you have a real treat, uh, you go down there, and uh, Paul and Debbie are very congenial people. Uh, they let you go through the rooms, you know, they're they let you take pictures? Of, can you take pictures? You can take uh, pictures, oh, yes. there, photographs, you can take recordings. They don't so mind it's good, at all. It's, so that's a good place to gather evidence. Oh, yeah. It's because a wonderful you're not really place worried about get. anything no. evil no. there. No, no nothing no. evil. But you want to get spirit It's a phenomenal. very relaxed atmosphere there, uh, Tony. Very relaxed type of atmosphere in the place. So it's not like you're in some spooky, dark place. And, and, uh, and I have to tell you that. Paul the, is the direct decorator here. He has kept the motif of that Victorian building yeah, that the same era. as it was in the 1800s. Now that might have a beautiful have job on that. Oh, one. Yes, Thank you, you have. very much. And when that was that place probably built? Probably has 1895. Can you tell 18, us a little more about that? How yeah, it was built in? sure. The um, land was purchased back in 1865, and sometime between 1865 and 1895, when the house was completed. Um, and the Worcester family did move into it. Um, it took um, probably eight to ten years to complete it, and from oh. what I found in the town hall records, of a cost of ten thousand um, oh dollars. You got to imagine God. that the labor back then was only like three cents an hour. You can't even build a room for that. Right? You can't even build a room nowadays for that. So the whole mansion, um, the uh, eight thousand square feet, the uh, twenty rooms that are in there 
cost approximately ten thousand dollars to go <laughs> back then. Oh my God! Um, he lived there for um, a period of about twenty-four years. William H. Worcester. Then he passed away in um, 1919. Then his wife passed away in 1926. And from 1926, wow. um, from Anna Putnam Worcester, when she passed away, Ruth Worcester and uh, William, not William, um, Horace Worcester, lived in the mansion. And for some reason, they got into a little scuff. This is later on, I guess, into the uh, 40s, and or, or yeah, I'd, I'd say the 40s. And when he passed away in uh, 1956, uh, they didn't speak for about 14 years. He lived on the third floor, and she lived in the rest of the mansion. Wow. So she had everything else. Isn't that amazing? And Imagine amazing. two people, a brother and sister, living no, in. Yeah. A, they created all of that. And uh, neither one of them married. They both died. Uh, um, not being married, and uh, well, when did maybe she that's what she's looking for—a husband. Uh, yeah. When did right. she die? Before? She died in 1972. She was wow. approximately 94 years old when she passed wow. away. She died of natural causes, and she just lived and adored the house. She um, must have. I understand and there's still relatives of theirs living uh, in that area. Yes, there is. There's uh, Roberta King. She lives in the area. Um, she's been very nice. She's come over to, uh, to the restaurant and uh, told me some stories and uh, mm -hmm. about. It. I guess it would be her great great aunt. Um, and it's just very interesting talking to Roberta. Hmm. Wow. Do you know today? I was looking for a phone number, and I was going through all of these cards looking for a phone number that I needed and lost. And among them, I found a little thing that said. Ruth Horace's picture and a phone number. Really? So somebody, honey, you've got to phone them. Somebody may have a photograph of well, her, and they gave me that phone number, and I uh -uh. saved it. Well, let me ask you guys a question, especially Ed and Lorraine. Are those spirits of the Worcesters still haunting that place, or are there other spirits there now? Well, I believe that uh, they're, they're there, there, of course, but, you know, one spirit will draw another spirit. But like attracts like. Mm -hmm. These were not evil people. There was a lot of animosity and anger, but we have that in a lot of families. But I think, yes, their spirits are positively there, but what they draw in are human spirits. Nothing evil, nothing demonic. No, And no. this is a gateway uh, to other worlds that we investigate. It's an ideal spot uh, to set up cameras, recorders, uh, see if you witness something, and you don't have to fear that you know something terrible is gonna happen to you because mm -hmm. it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been there many nights. Uh, Lorraine and I have been all over the world. We've been in some of the worst areas. And on a 1 to 10, Carousel Gardens is probably a 2. But I call them happy hauntings. Mm -hmm. That's what these are. So it's not like the Amityville Horror. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. no, no, no. God, God, no. Oh, no. No, it's, no, no, it's no like Amityville that. Horror. But you know, a lot of, lot of restaurants and um, buildings like this have been haunted for years and years. But what happens is some people go in there and they start using... Ouija boards, yeah. and that brings in something that's not so good. In other words, they start getting involved in occult practices. Yeah. To our knowledge, nothing like that has that ever happened. Nothing here. Ha that, that has ever happened in this building. And it's maybe some night, Paul. No. You and your wife, and Ray and I can have a little get together, and maybe uh, Ruth, we can invite her in, and Horace. Okay. And uh, you'll give them a free meal, I guess, right? Oh, for the for the ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> for the ghosts. We gotta pay. <laughs> <laughs> for the ghosts. But I, uh, you know, w when Ed is saying about inviting her in, we're certainly not doing that through any Ouija board or any no, type no. of now, science. Now, could this science. place have been haunted prior to the Worcesters haunting it? I, I don't, don't know. I don't. You think, think they so. started it? I think. It I started think. With them. I don't think so. I think it started with them. I would think, really, I mean, she died in the 70s, and then it went through transitions. It went through changes and like that, uh, Tony. But I don't think anybody else ever really opened any no. doors or like that, because there's nothing evil in that place. No, you, you, get, you get a good feeling when you walk in. It's not uh, a bad feeling. It's not something you're frightened of. It's a feeling that you can't expect something to happen, but nothing frightening. No. Nothing that's going to kill you. No, no, nothing no, no, is gonna, no, 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 no way. No. I mean, it's, it's over 100 years old. The atmosphere is beautiful. I yeah. mean, you've got to enjoy the atmosphere. It's like walking into a, an 1800s house. Yeah, it is. Paul has kept everything just as almost it was. Almost like original, almost. Like oh, yes. Redone, but original. It is. Yes, it is. I mean, now, I you're living in a house 
that's almost 200 years old. Right. I won't go there at night. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that that's not. That's not haunted. Well, my house isn't haunted. Your house, house isn't, isn't haunted. haunted, no. Well, so what's but the lesson to learn on this whole thing? What's the lesson to learn from a haunting like this? Is there a lesson involved in this? Yes. Well, Positively. I think survival. Is what's the lesson, Ed? Knowledge. Knowledge, uh, we yes, can, survival, We can get, go into a building like Carousel Gardens, and we can take recordings, and we can take photographs, and we know that we are entering another dimension. We're going into worlds that very, very few people know anything about. But of course, being in this work for so many years, we understand what's happening there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, a, it's just a, a storehouse of knowledge as far as the paranormal goes. And nothing's ever going to hurt you there. You yeah. don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And who knows? You might go there some night and see Ruth. In fact, she might even join you well, for dinner. Who knows? I think, <laughs> I think it's important for people today, Tony. I think everyone wants evidence. Proof. Proof. They do. They all want Proof evidence. Proof that there's life after death. Yes. And I think if you are able to get that in certain locations without, you know, jeopardizing yourself and putting yourself in danger's way. Well, as you can see, you know, uh, the electromagnetic energy outside is, is, is just as prominent as inside. Yeah. So people can go there and they can take photographs outside. See, the amazing thing to me is this. I take pictures of my house outside. I don't get this. You don't get that. I no. take pictures of other people's residences. Yeah. I don't get you this. Don't get no. So I know this is something different than the night. It norm. is. That's, That's right. exactly right. It's not like right. you take a picture at night and there's all well, this look fog. Look at that building. I mean, you know, it's... Yes. Uh, because it's I fun. know people have taken pictures of this particular place on a crystal clear night. Yes. Nobody was smoking. There was right. no car exhaust. There was no fog. Oh, no. They got the film developed and this is what they got. Exactly. Exactly. So that right there, to me, is evidence. Well, I remember, I remember, Tony... Ed and I, uh, this one night, we were alone uh, in Scotland, and we stayed at a place different than we had ever stayed in before. And uh, looking out the window that night, I said to Ed, boy, doesn't have a mystical feeling about it, you know, right outside of this window. So in the morning, I took photographs out the window, just out the window. It was, looked like a, like a little fairy setting. Oh, I got all of this. In the daytime. Now, in most cases, you need to get this at night. It is much easier to take a psychic photograph during the hours from 9 o'clock at night to 6 o'clock in the well, morning. light shows up, it gets dark. Yes. Electromagnetic energy, of course, is light. That's why in the graveyards at nighttime you get such fantastic pictures. At the Carousel Gardens, this would be the best time would be in the evening to get pictures like that. You, Paul and Debbie don't mind if you walk around, if you come in, uh, if you take pictures, uh, they welcome you in there. So uh, you, you welcome them, right? Yes, Paul? we you do. think after 9 o'clock at night would be a good time? Yeah, to go? that is well, the only time yes. after dark. After dark. It, it can be, you know, 5 30, 6 o'clock. As long as it's dark and you get better pictures. But in the summertime, of course, Tony, it, it's going to be 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Well, it won't be that late. It'll be like. It gets dark around nine. Or around nine. nine. Okay, around it's nine. It's not like Scotland. inside the building. No, <laughs> inside <laughs> the building, you don't have to worry about being dark because it, so it gets dark anyway. We're almost out of time. But any last words, Paul? That you want to? Any other story? Maybe you remembered real quick, or? All right. Well, um, with the uh, picture that I have taken, I took it about uh, five years ago. I had a, a wonderful picture outside, and there was a spiraling effect of the ghost coming out. It looked like really? it came from Ruth Worcester's windows. It looked like there was uh, energy mm -hmm. inside and a large um, formation formed by this one person. And another person was taking the uh, picture and the uh, energy around the person made the, uh, a dog appear on the back of the person's hair. So wow. it just oh formed. Yeah. And her favorite um, um, dog was a Pekingese. And it kind of looks like a Pekingese uh, dog. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Just yeah, recently, okay. We had two young boys come. This was about three, four weeks ago. They have the very same identical picture that they took. Really? You're See? kidding. And what's strange about this, they promised to bring it back. I held it in my hands. I didn't want to give it up. And it's been three weeks. As if they came, took the picture and showed me, now they've vanished. Right. Oh, boy. So now we're on a hunt for them. We know they're out in North Haven someplace. Wow. And we wow. have to find out where they are. But it was almost identical. Well, well there you have it. One of our lectures. Somewhere. They'll, they, that's We're basically out of time. Okay. There you have it. The haunting in Connecticut of a, 
kind of the Worcester mansion. So for Ed Warren, for Lorraine Warren, for Paul, for everyone at Charter, I'm Tony Spera. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you.